Hi there guys, welcome into my earth lodge. Just cooking myself up a bacon sandwich. I cook on here most days. This is a Petromax system, it's a fire bridge and um, good cast iron frying pan. You don't have to wash them up, you just have to clean them out when you're done. Anyway, while that's cooking, let me explain what this little video is going to be about. So, see this little tool here? It's called a Tronchade Adz, and it's about 6,000 years old. It's made in the Mesolithic period, and it's a carpentry tool, basically. And it fits onto a handle like that. The only trouble is, I'm in a bit of a fix because this one that's on here is set up slightly wrong at the end this uh, cutting edge should be slightly higher up so what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new one and I'll show you what's so important about this tool and why they chose to make it um, the way they did 6,000 years ago I suppose I get a, better get me breakfast down my neck first um, there's something about cooking over the fire. I've been doing it for quite a few years now and um, it never gets old, it never gets boring. Cooking is always part of the pleasure. So um, if you take nothing else from this video, um, sometime in the near future, build yourself a little fire, get some pots and pans out there, go and have um, a bit of time around the fire. Anyway, um, we better get on with the video, right? So what makes this tool important then? It's the tranche right at the edge. <coughs> and how they get that is um, you construct it. This uh, working edge here, you construct it. That's the first thing you do. And the reason you do that is because you don't want to directly hit it. So you've created this perfect chisel, beveled edge that's going to be um, immaculate and strong so that it can go to work and do its job properly. So, I have a rock here. This big old chunk. And I'm going to be looking for a place on this rock that I can hit and potentially take the right shape off to construct the tool out of. So a piece of flint like this potentially can offer me many, many tools um, if I don't ruin it on the way. But I'm beginning to look at this area here. Um, I use my finger as a pen. That area there is going to be the front of the tool. So we're going to hit it here and release this big broad flake that's the plan obviously it happens to be the most important shot because if it doesn't come off right and we don't get that tranche then there's no tool to go for and we'd have to redesign our ideas and go again but it's a reasonable plan so let's see what happens So, right there, big quartzite rock, okay, there's actually two brakes going on there, this bit has come off the top. But there is a brand new fracture laying in here and probably, yeah, that's come off and there's the back of it. So that plan didn't work. Okay, so I need to try and adjust my thinking now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and turn this flat elevation into a curved one. We're going to take a shot off here. 
to make that dip down. Then we'll come from the back and we'll try and come right along, finalising in the tip. Trying to get the side out so that I can make a platform shape in here because that cortex was which is the skin of the flint was in the way. Okay, that's dipped that end down just a little. There's a small scar inclusion just here that could alter things a bit. But now it's a tall order, but we're looking to send something right down the back there. Oi. Right, we've got an awesome flake off. But there's always a butt, isn't there? We look at how that travelled and what it cast. This little bit has flown off, and consequently, this is not a tranche. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to do a small amount of rethinking here. Um, it's a great bit of flint, and it could become the tool that I'm looking for, but we don't have the chisel tip. So, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and set up a platform here and tilt from that side and then set up a new platform and tilt from that side and create the chisel at this end and then build the tool round. I'd prefer to get the, the flake cast off with that in so for example this edge here which is sharp is actually the sort of shape that I'd want but the tool isn't long enough so um, it just it isn't organised right yet. I mean, that's flint napping all the way through, really. What you've got to do is you've got to moderate your thinking. Because as much as you can do most things and they come right, there are times when you've got to adjust because it isn't quite going in your favour. But um, that's management. Simple as that. <coughs> right. So let's see what happens. We're going to set a side platform up in here. make that strong and we tilt that quite gonna put quite a deep tilt into that Okay, that went across okay, but it didn't give me as much as I need. So we'll try from this side as well. Now that one has put this angle in, which is good. There's a few things laying here which are problems because it ribbles um, but there's still a fairly good chance we can set that situation up. This piece of flint is actually longer than I need it to be so even if this goes wrong I've got more chances of setting it up afterwards. Okay, so another one here.
and ow. putting things down, picking things up, we bleed if you're not careful. I'm just going to adjust that little bit there, and uh, including the blood, we actually have this area now that. So if we take the piece of flint away and look at that shape, what we have is we have that. So the idea is, is we build the shape around it. Bleeding for my craft again. Something else I need to point out to you as well. When we look at the original, the top of it is quite steep up here. And the underside is relatively flat. And the reason for that is because you're going to be laminating the flat side onto a piece of wood. And the bulk gives the whole thing strength when it's used. When we finish this, we are going to bind it, and we are going to use it. So we're flattening off the underside right now. Beautiful flakes as well. And they'll be, being, all of them will be kept to make other tools with, apart from the little skinny ones that really don't amount to much. So remember, all, of the, all I'm doing at the moment is flattening this off. Maintaining. I'll be losing a lot of the back, because that doesn't need to be there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to narrow the whole tool, but we're not going to be thinning it. So when we turn this over now, and we start casting flakes this way, all they're going to do is go to the middle, but not really any further. And we'll begin to lose some of this length as well. And you really want the tool that's going to be you're going to be being used, be using in the forest to be super efficient. 
you know, when you swing the blade, you want the blade to cut. And you don't want that blade to break either. And the interesting thing is, when we look at the one that um, is 6,000 years old, it's almost still in perfect position and condition. It's got a little bit of damage here, but that's probably time that damaged that more than when it was used. Got a few strong flakes that I want to pass from this side now. Once again, going to the middle, but not going beyond it. Right, so then, in all sense and purposes, what we have is we have this tool here. We've maintained the back and we have a flat profile on the bottom. So what we need to do is get that anchored onto a piece of wood and see what it's up to. what I'm looking for is the perfect setup. You need the upright shaft with a branch coming off at that angle. Believe it or not, that can be tricky to find sometimes, but um, we'll see what we can do. I'm keeping my wits about me in here because uh, although it's not rutting season, there's some big old stags roaming around through this particular piece of forest. So, I've been walking around for good 15 minutes um, looking for the perfect setup and I have it right here it's a good, good handle and a good angle and I'm going to get that down from there and then we'll take that back to the earth lodge and construct this and um, see how she operates I did bring the old one with me but with how high up that is um, it's going to be a difficult thing to operate in the first place. And as you can see, as you can see, it didn't last me many minutes because this bit of wood, over the time that that's been set up, has died, so it just fell off. So it's got to be better than this. So fortunately, I brought this. <laughs> Okay, so we have what could potentially become our new Mesolithic ads handle. It's quite a lot of work to do here, right? And um, the problem is, is I don't have a tronchade ads yet. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you that just with one of the flakes that we knocked off we can do this job now I'm cutting through bark but also getting into the wood but it's the ads that we're making which is going to make the whole life, my whole life easier so to get this job done I'm going to use I'm going to use a, um, 
a parang, which instantly you can see that's going to speed up my progress. Well, sometime later now, and I've done the best I can at a whittling exercise with this, and uh, here we have the blade that's going on it. In the bucket beside me, what I have is I have some, um, well it's part rawhide, part buckskin, but a big strap I've just soaked up and just got to get off the excess water. I want that reasonably dry to work with, but I want the elasticity of it, of it that it doesn't have when it's the buckskin. So. That's pretty good. And in here we have the pine pitch glue, which is almost ready. It's almost hot enough. And it's going to be time to try and put this whole lot together in a way where it's going to be nice and strong. So here we go then. And I reckon the best way to deal with this just kind of wash the back end in, of it in that. I'm going to um, laminate the strap into the back like so. And um, just pop that down for a minute and get a bit more wash, get a bit more of this washed over here. I'm really not worried about where this resin ends up, whether it's on the top, whether it's on the bottom, because um, it's all going to get wrapped up and compressed. So that's sitting. On there like that. It's bloody sticky when it's wet. And we can begin to really strap this down tight. I want to keep the strapping nice and flat. Done that. And now what we're going to do is going to head back like so, really pull that tight. That is on there tight. And the final thing is to um, coat this whole thing. Probably going to get a bit excited about this now. It starts dripping. And so it's fair to be said that we've made a tool. We've made a reproduction meso mesolithic adz from about 6,000 years ago. Should we go and see what it works like? Okay, so what we have here is we have a piece of silver birch. It's not doing very well in its location. It's slightly rotten down the bottom. There's some deer damage up the top. Um, I can take this, I can use it, I can use its bark. Um, so essentially what we want to do is we want to know how efficiently and effectively this is going to work as a cutting tool.
So this wouldn't normally be used for chopping a tree down. It would be normally used for supporting you to make something like a bow. Which essentially means that you'd be taking the, a lot of material out from one side. Which is what you're watching me do. Without any real worry about the tool itself. I've made the tool with a view of it being efficient and with a view of it being something that a Mesolithic hunter-gatherer would have recognised as a good bit of kit for doing the job that he needed to do efficiently and effectively. So there it is, look. Getting the side on that profile there. It, it did actually take one or two tiny little scuppers out and all said and done. Well within the video I settled for what I've got that is slightly thin. Um, but that was the Tronchade ads. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully that will inspire you to hit the subscribe button and uh, make sure you follow me for more videos how to do stuff and what goes into stone age tool making and so forth all the best guys cheers